Hi everyone, welcome to our customer webinar, McCarthy Building Company, using a training program to increase adoption of BlueJeans. My name is Maggie Bliss and I will be your moderator this morning. Today I am joined by CJ Reed, the IT Training Manager at McCarthy Building Company, and Justin McKethy, our BlueJeans Product Marketing Manager. So before we kick things off, there are a few housekeeping items I'd like to go over. First, today we are using BlueJeans events and you are in a one-way viewing experience. If you need to talk to us at all on the right hand side you can see the third icon down is the moderator chat feature if you have any technical issues please put them in there and we'll address them as quickly as possible and then the last icon is the q a chat feature so if you have any questions for justin or cj today please put them there and we will read them after the presentation and lastly this is being recorded and we will send it out to everyone after the event perfect thanks justin passing it to you Great, Maggie, thank you so much and welcome to everybody. This is McCarthy Building Company using a training program to increase adoption of BlueJeans. Super excited today to welcome CJ Reed, IT Training Manager from McCarthy Building Company. And he and I are gonna go back and forth for a little while and talk about their implementation and adoption strategy over at McCarthy. Um, a quick breakdown about the agenda and what we're gonna talk about today. We'll start off with the business background and learn a bit about McCarthy Building Company and their approach to IT and collaboration. Also addressing the new normal, so to speak, when it comes to video conferencing for remote work because everyone around the country and around the world is working remotely right now. Uh, McCarthy and the Blue Jeans Partnership, how did we get started together? What was it about that early relationship that allowed McCarthy to move forward with us as a video conferencing vendor? And then we'll get into the training and implementation strategy. And we'll go into some pretty good detail when it comes to what CJ and his team did in terms of getting Blue Jeans off the ground to make sure everybody was educated and comfortable with the product. And then at the end, please, we encourage you to ask questions, ask CJ uh, or myself, and we'll field some of those questions. And so with that, CJ, I'm going to pass it over to you right now. And if you could... Please explain to folks out there a little bit about McCarthy Building Company and how IT fits into the overall company framework. Absolutely, thank you, Justin. So to talk about McCarthy, you gotta go back to the Civil War, actually. In 1864, an Irish immigrant named Timothy McCarthy began a small business building barns and farmhouses in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And now you fast forward 150 years later, we are a top commercial builder and we owe a lot of that growth to our clients and our partners. So as a commercial builder, uh, we're helping clients achieve their goals. It's our passion to develop, uh, deliver maximum value in commercial construction uh, for consistency and eclipsing our clients' expectations. And our clients uh, consist of, of many different businesses. So our clients are schools, they're hospitals, resorts, entertainment centers, colleges, casinos, uh, wastewater and treatment facilities. As you can see, we have a lot of different clientele and our clients vary by project size, level of complexity and facility type. Uh, but what they all have in common is that, you know, they need a trustworthy partner to be able to partner with to enable them to achieve their business and community goals. So in addition to our partners that we partner with, we also partner with architects, engineering firms, subcontractors, and trade partners to help achieve our clients' goals as well. And if you look at our current facility, we have 17 US office locations across the company. So we do business just in the United States. And then we also have probably over 200 job sites across the country as well. And Amongst the employees, we have about 2,300 salaried employees that consist of office and field personnel. And then we have about 2,800 craft employees in the trades that are working for McCarthy as well. So about 5,100 total employees nationally in the company. So I am the IT training manager for McCarthy Building Companies, and I work for our IT department. And from an IT perspective, you know, the purpose of our department is, you know, we're as construction is becoming more faster uh, with schedules and tighter budgets and a different process from client to client. You know, McCarthy invests a lot in technology and it can be a differentiator to commit a successful outcome for our clients. And so we deliver, you know, internet services, technology services and deliveries to 
uh, our partners, not just in the offices, but also at the job site level as well. So we also have a lot of tools that we provide, technologies that we support, but one of those th technologies is BlueJeans. So, you know, we're trying to improve communications and enhance collaborations utilizing BlueJeans meetings. And so that's just one of our technologies that we provide to support our, our partners at McCarthy. Very nice. a little bit about yeah. us. Yeah. Fantastic. Good, great introduction. And while we were preparing for this webinar, you know, that was one thing that definitely stood out to me that is very unique about your business and the construction industry in general, because it's not just these permanent office buildings, but it's also these temporary construction sites. And your team is responsible for outfitting those with collaboration technology like BlueJeans. And now, I think in the wake of the change and the shift in this transformation to remote work over the past couple of months, I would love to know, you know, how has your day-to-day -day workflow changed across the company at McCarthy and speak to, you know, COVID-19 and its impacts across the IT org as well as other departments at McCarthy? Yeah, sure, Justin. So, yeah, COVID-19 has been a big change for us and, and for a lot of businesses. So one of the things with COVID-19, I would say fortunately for us, is that, you know, construction has become considered an essential business. So with that, we've been able to continue running our job sites uh, throughout the country. Now we have had some areas in the country have deemed certain construction only essential. And we've had had a, a couple of job sites that have had to close down, unfortunately. But, you know, having our job sites, you know, running is is very critical for us because if we were to shut down a job site in the middle of construction, uh, that's gonna have a significant impact on scheduling. Uh, not only that, if you shut down a job site, if you have raw materials like steel out on the job site and it's just laying out there and exposed to the natural elements of weather, uh, that quality of that material is no longer gonna be good. And so you're gonna have to purchase new, new raw materials and supplies to build your building. So it would have had a significant impact um, have we had to close our job sites and continue not being able to continue the business of construction? So we are very fortunate with that. Now, one of the things that we had to make a decision about was our office employees. So again, we have about 17 offices in the in the country where we made the decision to relocate all of our office employees to now work completely remotely from home. Uh, this was a big cultural change for us. We were we are not a company that typically works from home. And this was a big, you know, I, I would say trust with, with all of our folks in the field to allow the office employees to do that and work from remotely and still support our job sites. Uh, and so with that, that significant cultural change, that kind of created some some new things for us that we had to do on the technology side. So now we had to actually increase our licensing for BlueJeans meetings. And so if you think about how some meetings were conducted, you had meetings that took place in the office amongst coworkers. You had manager employee meetings, meeting in offices and discussing. And so now from a working remotely standpoint, you had to have to, a way to substitute those on-site meetings to now meet online. So we saw that need, we increased our, our licenses by a few hundred more BlueJeans meetings. Another thing that we did was we actually just recently purchased a license for BlueJeans events. Uh, we realized that with the behavioral change in our culture and moving, working remotely, uh, we were gonna need a platform to support you know, more than 150 people. And so we had a chance to be able to purchase uh, the BlueJeans events a license, and we've had a couple successful events with that. And a, a story I'll share with you real quick. So one of our cultural things that we do, so we, we typically bid on a project, and that office that pursues a bid and tries to win a job, uh, we have a, a tradition in all of our offices. We have a physical bell that if we get awarded that job and win it, somebody goes into the main lobby area, rings the bell, and everybody gathers together physically to celebrate that win that we got. Now, since we are not meeting physically anymore, we had this idea to do what's called a virtual bell ringer. So we had a Blue Jeans meeting event. Uh, this took place uh, through our 
our Southwest region in our Phoenix office. We set up a Blue Jeans event and had a virtual bell ringer to announce the winning of one of the largest solar projects that's gonna happen in the state of Colorado for BP. So it was a really successful event. Uh, we had our CEO and COO participate in that bell ringer and we just got rave reviews about that. And so, and it was an opportunity to kind of share some good news uh, with what's going on in our company in, in the midst of this tragedy right now. So that was a big win for us. So some other things that we're doing uh, with this, I actually partnered with our HR department, the organizational development group, and we actually conducted four different types of, of working remotely sessions to kind of help employees get used to and just have conversation about what it means to work remotely. So some of the things that we did was, uh, one of those sessions was working remotely from an individual standpoint. I won't be able to have time to go through all the details of, of what we covered in the priorities, but I'll just hit on a couple of them. So working remotely for individuals, what I covered in that particular session was I provided them uh, what I call a matrix of, of what to use when. This is a matrix that shows some of the different technologies that we have at McCarthy and giving them scenarios on what technology they need to use and when. So BlueJeans was in there, as was BlueJeans events, on letting people know what technologies to use because we have a lot of other technology tools that kind of overlap each other. And we wanted to make sure that people had clarity on what technologies to use because now people are changing their behavior and working differently. So another session that we had was working remotely for managers. Uh, for managers, some priority items that we talked about was the subject of formalizing communication. Managers being able to set consistent, predictable meeting times to both their team and individual parties. And we talked about how you can use BlueJeans to be able to schedule those priority meetings with their employees. And we also talked about how an idea that managers could go ahead and maybe advertise their Blue Jeans meeting room. So when you create it, when you have a Blue Jeans meeting room, you have a custom URL that associates with your name. And a manager could tell their employee, you know, between the hours of two and three, my office is going to be open and you can, you can come in and we can have a discussion about things. So that was another thing that we did. Another class that we had was working remotely for teams. What we talked about there was establishing a consistent and predictable rhythm to communication. So we emphasize and talk about the value of recording your Blue Jeans meetings and, and posting them somewhere consistently. So if members of, of that team are not able to join that meeting, they could go and access that recording. So another thing that we talked about too in that class was you know making sure that everybody is heard and is participating. So you know, if you decide to mute participants, for example, let people know that the chat feature is available and people can communicate that way. And then all, another thing we touched on was the fact that, you know, some people may not be comfortable with using video in meetings and just so that team members are aware of that and just give them time to get used to that change of using video. And then the last course that we talked about was hosting effective meetings. In there, we talked about etiquette tips for mo mobile meetings. We talked about some of the advanced meeting options for BlueJeans. And then we also talked about some of the BlueJeans apps that are available within the platform, such as the meeting highlights, the whiteboard, annotation, and the breakout sessions. So that, with that, we were able to kind of communicate to them how they can reclaim their calendar, how to boost meeting engagements and improve organizational follow through with some of those meetings. So talked a lot about those BlueJeans apps in that particular class there. Fantastic. And uh, obviously switching to the remote work day to day took a lot of work on your end. And it sounds like a lot of folks got up to speed thanks to some of those training programs and best practices. Um, if we can now shift back to the beginning of the Blue Jeans and McCarthy relationship before your deployment of our services, please speak to the different types of challenges that you faced in the IT org as it relates to conferencing technology and satisfaction satisfaction across user groups. Yeah, sure, Justin. So, so we had we kind of had quite a few challenges with this. And, you know, one of the things that we were faced with was the fact that, you know, I think looking back, we needed to have really a single vendor 
uh, to be able to support our our conferencing services. So, you know, we had we had Ready Conference, we had Microsoft products, we had uh, WebEx, we had uh, GoToMeeting was another one. You know, we had all of these different platforms that people use throughout the company uh, to be able to do do meetings and there just wasn't consistency. Support was a challenge from an IT perspective. And, and there was also folks that were using our conference rooms and trying to adapt different platforms to get that to be used with the video conferencing equipment that we had in our offices as well. And, and it just was really hard to maintain that support and, and helping with, with that. So that was another thing that we'd face is just, just kind of handling all the different types of platforms there. Um, you know, I mentioned just briefly just about conference rooms in general. So, you know, we had, we had non-standardized conference room equipment in all of our offices. In fact, you could even go to one office and you could see different hardware in one conference room and a completely different hardware in another conference room and within the same office. So people would have to relearn and think about ways to how to use the, the equipment one way in an office, and then they would have to learn it a different way in another, especially those that would travel from different offices and even traveling from down the hall to another room. And, and then not only that, but there was also, you know, mistrust with the, with the technology. It wouldn't work all the time. and and so what adopted and happened was that, you know, it just really wasn't getting used. Video conferencing was just not something that was was happening. And so the behavior that people were doing was they would just gather in the rooms and they would just call a phone number and just have a conference call and just have audio only meetings. Once in a while, people were exploring the video, but we were not a video friendly company at all. It was it was just seldom used. So and then we just again, I think I may mention this, was that we just didn't really have a good platform to be able to, to use in the hardware that we wanted to, to support video conferencing as well. So those are some challenges we faced. And then that leads us into this next aspect. You said originally you guys were not a video-friendly company be before we started this relationship, but then why have you found that video is a critical aspect of workplace productivity. And I love how much time that you spent and the data and analysis that went behind some of this decision-making. So please explain some of these things. Yeah, sure. So when we were talking, I'll get into the initiative a little bit, but you know, we certainly believe now and, and learned early on that the power of video communication has far more reaching implications on productivity. You know, we've learned that the clarity of information that's exchanged when you can see peers and managers, you know, it increases your retention of knowledge. You know, it's going to allow you to get more done in a shorter period of time. So meetings should ultimately be shortened as well. You know, you compare this with an audio only conference, you're only going to have, you know, verbal cues and, and, and some of that body language gets lost in translation, you know, without the emphasis of video. So, yeah, if you look at this chart here, uh, there's there's an author named Dr. Albert Merabian, who did some scientific research, conducted several studies on nonverbal communication. And in his book, this is what he came across. He talks about how 7% of our words that we communicate, that's just words, 7% of the communication. 38% is based on vocal elements and how you're speaking. And then 55% is nonverbal elements. Now just let that sink in a little bit. If, think about if you're having an audio only meeting taking place, you are missing over half of the elements of communication in that meeting. That's significant. You know, just adding the video component and having the ability to see the body language that, that people are trying to convey and come across in the communication, that's completely left out. You know, this was a big wake up call in, in some of my analysis research because, you know, we were making plans to go ahead and upgrade our technology. And, you know, from an IT perspective, technology upgrades are cool. But at the end of the day, it's like, well, how is this affecting our business? You know, there must be a business value in, in implementing and spending money on video conferencing equipment. 
And this is one of the things that I talked about in our training programs as people learned how to use the conference room technology was getting the point across about how video can be such a great boost for productivity and how you're missing so much from your meetings without using it. Excellent and, then, and incre yeah. incredibly interesting. Uh, and go on if you have more here before I move on. Oh, just a little bit, that little note there about smart meetings and highlights. So in terms of productivity, that is just a fantastic new application within the BlueJeans meeting platform because another boost to productivity is just engagement in using, being active in the meetings itself. So when you have different people in a meeting, you know, everybody has different things that they get out of those meetings, right? And so with that particular app, anybody in the meeting can engage and then make mark a highlight to indicate what's important to them. And as those meetings are recorded and you can go back, you can easily see where those important highlights were for you. You know, how many meetings have you been in? I know I've been in a few where you find out, now what were those key points, initiatives that we were trying to accomplish in this meeting? So much of that knowledge gets lost very easily. And so the ability to just mark a key point in that meeting that happens to be able to record 10 seconds back, and I think it's 45 seconds on, and then quickly having those quick notes there is just so valuable. So it's, it's a great another boost in productivity, that particular app and using it. Absolutely. We, we definitely love that you guys have adopted smart meetings. It, it does help for meeting highlights and summary recaps as well. After the fact, you can quickly reference everything that was discussed without missing any of the details and the finer points after the fact. So. When we talk now about the implementation process across various environments, please speak through the different phases that you went through when it comes to campus locations, offices, and also the remote employee base. Yeah, so so I'll go back to 2018 when you know we realized we had we had all these issues I had talked about earlier about our conference room technology and how it wasn't being used and we don't have the right consistent equipment. So our, our our fabulous networking team and our IT department did a great job of, of spending a lot of time in 2018 researching, finding the right hardware that we want to use, finding the right vendor to partner with for our video conferencing, and then also looking very closely at BlueJeans to help support our video conference initiative as well. So at at the end near the end of 2018, we got approval a multi-million dollar approval initiative in 2019 to standardize all of our conference rooms uh, throughout the whole organization. All of our rooms, all of our offices. Uh, another challenge we had was that, you know, different offices would spend their own money, but now we had a corporate IT initiative to go ahead and standardize everything. And so, so with that, um, I did a lot of analysis to try to see what, what the goals were gonna be for our IT department. And installing some of the technology into the conference rooms. And so real quickly, what we did was, you know, we started out uh, going to our first office, I believe it was in San Diego in, in early February last year. Uh, so a, a networking engineer would go out to that office, you know, work with the vendor, we would get the technology working in the room, and then I would time my training program. So we did instructor-led training and held sessions to conduct training on how to use the video conferencing. We also covered how to use BlueJeans. And we also timed it to where we would conduct those sessions when the rooms were becoming available. And with, with that, we did it, we just go ahead and repeated that process. So throughout the course of 2019, we started going to all of our offices and installing the hardware, putting everything in place, and then being able to provide instructor-led training to using blue jeans and using the video conferencing equipment. So, and there were some pockets too with it's kind of in our phase two and that what we're really focusing now uh, this year is we're starting to get more of that same technology into our job sites. So our job sites, you know, very differently, you know, some of them are in trailers, some of them are in, you know, client off buildings, but a lot of our spaces that our field employees use 
you know, they're seeing the interest and they're seeing the value of using now video conferencing. And so we're putting some of that same technology now into the field where they can also do video conferencing as well. And so uh, another thing I quickly missed real quick to forgot to mention was that we also partner with our end user computing team where we try to align in pushing the BlueJeans desktop software and also the Outlook add-in and then also removing a different uh, application, getting that out of Outlook so people weren't using, you know, still using the old platform for scheduling online meetings, making sure that was removed and timing it to where people would use, have that technology readily available, make it easy for them to get started with using BlueJeans. Very good. We're going to now take that and drill in a little bit deeper into this training and onboarding program that you guys put together using the Kirkpatrick model. So please describe this sophisticated strategy and also talk through what works and why. Yeah, uh, this model's, this is a great model I'd, I could talk a long time about, but I'm gonna make this uh, pretty quick and, and just describing what this is. So what this model is, it's a best practice model for, for training managers like myself that is used to try to evaluate the training program. And so what you're looking at is, is four levels in the Kirkpatrick model. And these are, you can look at these as kind of goals that you can set in evaluating your training program. And so you start with level one, and that is what's called a reaction. So these, you might've participated in other training programs where, where you just fill out a quick survey and you just kind of rank how you felt about you know, how much you learned the program, how relevant that training was, you know, for your role. Uh, and so after the end of our instructor-led trainings, we, we provided some just quick surveys that they rank, five questions, and just so we can get some immediate feedback on what people thought of our, of our training program. And that can help us to quickly, you know, change it if we needed to as we were rolling the technology out over the course of last year. And a lot of times training programs just, just end there. And, and you don't really get all that much value, in other, in other words, how people reacted to what they thought about the training. So level two is the next level of evaluation that a training manager can pursue, and that's learning. And so what we did was we went ahead and sent out a survey that had more detailed questions that came, went out about a couple days later after the instructor-led session. And this was an opportunity where when I was in the design phase, in, laying out the different learning objectives, we wanted to see what people captured and learned from that event. And so what we had found was that for the majority, that what people were saying that they learned from the event is the exact same learning objectives that we put out in our training program. So we found that to be successful. Um, from the beginning, we had set a goal to achieve the level three, and that is the, the behavior. So level three behavior is, so now that you've evaluated and can confirm what they've learned, the next step is to see if there's been a behavioral change uh, with this technology that we put in. So what we're measuring is, is that when they return to the job, you know, are they using the video conferencing system? Are they now adapting and using BlueJeans meetings more? Uh, so I would actually reach out and ask for people to participate in a 15 minute session where they join a video conference room in a conference room and I talk with them and I asked them questions stating, you know, have you been using the technology more? We wanna see if there's a behavioral change there. And not only that, I'm also going through an assessment. As I taught them different skills and using the video conferencing and using BlueJeans, I'm challenging them on those things that they learned to see if they retained that knowledge, you know, two months later. And so some of the, um, so that was some of the things that we did was achieve in this Kirkpatrick model. And you can use this as a way to measure the value of your training program for any IT initiative that you might have. Fantastic, definitely in depth. I also wanna recommend to anyone out there, if you'd like to read a really great contributor article and a thought leadership piece that CJ wrote for trainingindustry.com, really good stuff and definitely drills into some of the technical aspects of this model and what worked for those guys. So really good stuff out there. And then 
Yeah. You mentioned a little bit of this, and please, if you could, just go through some of the details about the results of this program and the metrics involved as well. Sure. So, so at the end of the day, when we finished all, all of our training sessions, so we had a total of, of 93 instructor-led sessions that, that myself and my team had led over the course of last year when we rolled out the Conference Room Technology Initiative. You know, that included a 502 trainees that participated. And we had covered 15 of our offices. So I was on quite a road trip last year. It was probably the most intensive initiative our company's ever had in terms of instructor-led training. And as a result of that, you know, I'll go through some of the results in some of the, the Kirkpatrick model, for example. So when we interviewed a lot of the participants in the training, you know, we had found that like almost 60% of those that had participated in the training said that they're using the technology more and using more Blue Jeans meetings. So we were very happy with those results. And then not only that, with the Blue Jeans platform, you get a great dashboard where you can also look at your active users. Uh, so from July to December of 2018, we had about 456 active users. And then we looked at January 2019 through December 2019. And that had 1,270 active users. So that resulted in an adoption of 179% increase. So we're really happy about that. We've seen that the investment that we made in our video conferencing system is, is definitely been worth it because we now are seeing more active participants in, you, in doing more video conferencing. Great to hear. Yeah, and I was just going to say real quick, Justin, that, you know, I, I did look at some stats for this year. Uh, I had it handy. Uh, I think it was about, it, it's a little bit higher. I would say it's probably, I think the numbers were about 1,500 active users uh, from January to April this year. Now, how much is impacted with COVID-19? Probably. Uh, but, you know, we're obviously seeing continued trends in usage of, of video conferencing. So great proof points and success metrics, and at least for the sake of an IT department or a facilities department that needs to prove return on their investment, it's really great to see how successful this whole program was and how, although we've got external forces right now forcing a lot of people to work from home, uh, we're certainly happy to hear that you had such an impact on such a large employee base. So great job to you and your team. Thank you, Justin. Absolutely. And now, hey, now's the, the really fun part, because now we want to engage the audience. We would love for everybody watching to please speak up, don't be shy, ask a question, use the Q&A on the right-hand side of your program, Blue Jeans events. Some of the topics that we covered, remote work, training, onboarding, the Kirkpatrick model, job site meetings, and performance about that training program. So that is how I'm going to hand it off to Maggie right now. And Maggie, if you could. Take it away on uh, the Q&A. Well, I think that it might just be uh, you and I, my friend. <laughs> okay. I think that <laughs> yeah, she, any, she, <laughs> but she- Any questions for me? <laughs> okay, Absolutely. no worries, yeah. So that's all right though, I've got one here in the margin, so. I'm going to okay. ask you this, CJ. So could you talk briefly about any resistance you may have experienced when you were doing training with some of your on-the-ground employees and how you worked through that? Yeah, so of course people are going to be resistant to technology. It, it's, it's a behavior I see a lot. And, you know, I think the challenge in that is that some people are just going to just throw up their hands and just say they're just just don't want to learn. They don't see the value in having the participation in this training event. And so what you have to do is it really comes back into the analysis and then putting together your learning objectives and and putting those together and then coming across in your training program to show how the value can be implemented for you, for them. You know, what's in it for them? That's always the key message that I always like to share in a training program. What's in it for them? You know, the key message in this particular one was the fact that, you know, we wanted to let them know that, you know, there's 
there's some science here that says, you know, some of these meetings that you're participating in where you're not using video, there's a there's a loss of productivity there. Wouldn't it be better to have an opportunity to improve your productivity in in your meetings? And and so that's that's what I always try to hit on is what's in it for them. And it's it's always a struggle to try to get people to to buy into the technology. And I would also say that don't be discouraged. You know, when you roll out a technology, you know, you know, everybody's going to join at once. A lot of times it can take some time to get to get build trust and, and to look into that new technology and use it. You know, also think about creating champions. You know, try to find business champions. Uh, if your company has different regions, uh, find a, a business champion to help drive that adoption. I find that be a very valuable way to try to drive adoption as well, is get somebody in the business to be an advocate for, for your program. That's great. I love that. And, uh, you know, there's something to that. You know, you silence the naysayers and you amplify the champions because the second you get someone on your team or or even better, another team that is a huge advocate all of a sudden for this new technology, you yeah. got to let them beat the drum for you because they, what what better advocate can you think of? You know, some third party that's actually new to it and they can get their crew to rally around it as well. Yeah, and you also got to lead by example too, Justin. I think too, as 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 I participate in in my own meetings, you know, that wouldn't look good if I decide, oh, I'm not going to use the camera today. You know, I, I need to be an advocate too, as I talk about and others to to lead by example. And I think that starts, you know, also with your manager. Your manager should also lead by example as well, and and encourage that behavioral change with their employee as well. So they should uh, they should lead too. Definitely. All right. So we've got another one here. So you touched on a little bit of this, but please go into greater detail. How do you see job sites and field workers specifically using blue jeans in the future? Yeah, I think I think it comes down to, you know, we have to have good technology, uh, internet connection, I think, at the job. So that that has come along quite a bit over the years. You know, it was really challenging sometimes to get just internet to our job sites. And so we're, our networking team is doing a phenomenal job in finding, finding ways to get internet access out there to our job sites and get, whether that's in the trailer or finding ways within an owner's building uh, to do that or providing, you know, satellite technology to get internet connection. That's, you know, using hotspots, you know, the ability to get internet connection is getting much better. And we're also now starting to put, you know, wireless access points, you know, throughout the different job sites as well. Um, so, you know, getting better internet connectivity, I think is gonna be helpful um, in trying to get people to adopt, I think in using BlueJeans. So that's really important. You know, the other thing too, that's really challenging is that you know, we we take safety very important. It's it's part of our culture. You know, we want people to be safe at the job sites. It can be challenging, and you got to be careful about you know being in online meetings and, and maybe using the mobile app for a blue jeans meeting on the job site. You know, it's not something we really want to emphasize and point at. So, I, I think there might be some cases where they could do that, but you know, I think most of the thing that we're focusing on right now is to get that blue jeans technology into the job site trailer and get them to use uh, for meetings. What we're seeing right now is that we have a lot of office uh, folks that, you know, like I'll give an example, our, our regional safety director, you know, will bring people out in the field to the office. And I remember when he had a chance to go through my training, he just a light bulb went off like, wow, I don't need to have these guys Come to the office i could just have them just attend a blue jeans meeting from their job site and we can talk about some of the safety initiatives that we want to focus on for this month or this quarter um, and so you think about the impacts of, of saving money with that um, and then that also gets them an opportunity to get exposed right if people at the office are are utilizing blue jeans then the field is going to get some experience with it and and they might start getting innovative and in how they might want to use the blue jeans platform from their side at the job site too. 
Makes a lot of sense. I've got another one here. I like this question a lot. And so I'll kind of tee this up. If you were to put yourself in the shoes of somebody that has not gone through a large scale deployment before, what is the one piece of advice that you'd really like for them to walk away with from, from this presentation? Well, I think what I'm trying to hit home is the fact that, you know, with, with technology initiatives and, and putting that out, I think a lot of times we we don't really think about what our what our objectives are in in terms of the impact of the business. So, you know, my focus wasn't just about, you know, putting some cool technology in. You know, I wanted to be able to look at what is the business value and why we're going to be using blue jeans. What what is it that we want to get from a business standpoint out of that? I think a lot of times we just start thinking about the technology and wouldn't this be cool if we use this technology? There really has to be a, a business case for your use of Blue Jean. You got to start there and look at what is what is going to be your strategic initiative. For us, we had a strategic initiative where the business bought in and they saw great value. And, and it was really about it was about cutting costs. It was about being able to provide better services. And, and not only that, but just seeing the value of, of doing video conferencing. You know, we, we, we do so much back and forth of moving to different offices and going to the job sites, you know, showing that we were gonna have better equipment and better platform to be able to do more online meetings was valuable. Um, the other thing too is if, you know, if you don't have an IT trainer, you know, maybe your organization has a learning and development department or a training department, you know, really consider partnering with them. And it also brings another outside perspective that's outside of IT that they can help bring in and provide you a way to be able to onboard people in, in a way. So, you know, I talked about the Kirkpatrick model. Training managers are going to go that route and they're going to want to know what how you want to evaluate the success of your of your rollout so again it goes back to you know setting those setting those goals and expectations of what you want to get out uh, of your blue jeans initiative absolutely i uh, got another couple of questions here so you mentioned in the beginning that working remote was very new for mccarthy so do you see more flexibility in how you do work even once things normalize and people start coming back to work? Do you think there will be that kind of continued flexibility at McCarthy? Yeah, that's a good question. Our our leadership team is 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 talking about that right now. They've been talking about it for weeks. You know, when we come out of this, you know, what is what does our business look like? You know, we're actually we're actually going to be moving into a new corporate office. Uh, at the end of, of December. So we're, we've kind of run out of space. We had multiple buildings just in St. Louis. We didn't have enough space for all of us. We're, we've been growing. And, you know, and you think it's like, wow, we're, we're spending a lot of money on, on a new building. And, you know, a lot, we're able to get a lot of work done working remotely, right? You know, it's going to be really interesting to see what the behavior is coming out of this as people come back. And, you know, this is something we're looking at really closely. How does that how does that look coming back to the offices? What is the new normal? You know, I think there's no doubt in my mind that I think people are are seeing some some good options to be able to to do business and work from home. I, I think it can certainly be done. We're we're doing it right now. You know, I think the other thing to too to look at is there's a this is new for us. So so now employees are realizing, wow, it, it's been really nice to, to work from home and 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 I'm seeing these benefits in doing that. You know, some, there are some negatives to this too. You're not being able to engage. There's nothing better than being face-to-face -face with somebody, right? But so a video conference like this is the next best thing, but you can't substitute, you know, with being together physically. And, and that's a value too. So, you know, maybe coming out of this, maybe it's going to be more of a hybrid where we might see more flexibility uh, with maybe a hybrid of working from home partially and then maybe going to the office. Don't know yet. We're, we're just going to wait and see what our leadership team thinks about that. I think a lot of companies are. I think there's a, there's a lot of wait and see, but it's interesting how this has been 
an experiment by force, you know, and so the folks <laughs> yeah. that maybe, you know, the, the, the companies <laughs> out there maybe that were not willing up front to adopt this new technology, nobody has a choice these days. And so uh, we're all interested at BlueJean, certainly, to see what happens on the other side of this. Um, oh, for sure. Yeah. You know, I, we've got one from Jessica in the audience. And by the way, she gives you a shout out. She's a big fan of your training industry write up. Oh, yeah. So Hi, high, Jessica. So high five on that. Um, so I would like to know when you conduct your training on a video tool, are you doing a full immersion of the product? Meaning, are you conducting your training of the product within the product? Yeah, good question. So the way the instructor led training sessions worked that we did was, it was it was really first off it was it was some powerpoint to talk about the initiative and what we're trying to accomplish and the goals and it was also an opportunity to to kind of walk through talk about the different software and the different hardware that we're using in our conference room technology and then it was a demonstration so i turned off the powerpoint i had people Typically, we also kept the, the size of the classes pretty small. We didn't want to have more than nine people because what we did was we had people kind of huddle around uh, the phone system. And I gave a demonstration to walk them through, you know, how to do an audio conference, which hopefully nobody's doing that. And then you've got, but people still want to know how to do, just make a call. You know, how to be able to walk through doing a video conference using Blue Jeans. And then we also talked about demonstrating how to share content to the TV in the room as well, and walking them through that. That was also an opportunity to make sure that the software was working on the computer, and, and that was working. And then we actually have a, a, a panel outside the room, which is a scheduler. So I actually walked them outside, and I, I showed them how the scheduler works, where they can walk up to the schedule, and they can actually book a room as well. So at the end of that, it was about, uh, it was about 20 minutes or so. And then for the next 10 minutes or even longer, um, I allowed them to just have opportunities where do you want me to walk through anything again for them? You know, maybe some people wanted to get on their computer and just test out sharing content. You know, we also provided the ability to share mobile devices. So people had iPhones or Android devices and they were sharing their, their mobile devices on the screen as well, making sure that was working. So. It then kind of got into some one-on-one -on -one and, and being able to do some more demonstration and opportunities for them to get comfortable using the technology. You know, one of the things that we didn't want to do was that, you know, I gave them a demo, I showed them how to use it, and then it was over. You know, people really learn well if they have hands-on experience and, and getting a chance to interact with it and learn themselves. So even when I went through the demo, I would actually ask somebody to just, if they, they want to go ahead and walk through it themselves, and I would walk them through the steps. And then we also provide a quick user guide in every single conference room. So if they did forget on how to use the technology, there would be a quick reference guide that they can that documents all the steps to go through. Very good. So we've got one more here that's very feature specific and it relates to smart meetings and highlights. So what I think would be a good way to go about this, I'll, I'll quickly explain what smart meetings and highlights can do, and then can you please explain how your teams are actually using it in the field sure. and abroad? Okay, so the Blue Jeans Smart Meetings and Blue Jeans Highlights, if you're unfamiliar, if you're in a Blue Jeans meeting and you turn on the recording feature, you automatically have the ability to create meeting highlights while the conversation is taking place. So if something important is said over a 30 minute or a one hour period, you get to just click highlight and automatically it captures that part of the conversation. It creates a little bookmark for it and you're automatically saved the audio and the video and whatever content is being shared. And so the value of that is that if CJ and I are having a conversation for a long time, neither one of us needs to scribble down notes or after the fact try and remember what the heck was the other person talking about, especially if it comes to something highly detailed. It allows you to just have this, this great uh, compartment of all the most important notes that you can immediately watch after the meeting or any other time as a replay. It's a recap reel of the highlights during the conversation. So perhaps a long-winded way of going about that, but uh, maybe you've got context now. So CJ, explain a bit about how the folks at McCarthy are, are using highlights. Yeah, so we're really new at this actually because we didn't really start communicating about 
smart meetings until we actually conducted that effective meetings, um, webinars that we were doing that I partnered with the HR group. Um, so when we were talking about effective meetings, we then introduced the the app and we went ahead and, and went through and enga engaged people to start kind of making highlights as we went through some of the discussions about how to have proper effective meetings. And then when the meetings were over, we went ahead and also just went ahead and we recorded these sessions. So obviously, so they were recorded and they were sent out to the participants and they had a chance to go ahead and see, you know, all those meeting highlights that participants had used. And so, so we have kind of had a small opportunity to kind of just introduce smart meetings. Um, we're looking at, to have more emphasis on and having more opportunities to get some more education, uh, more marketing about that feature uh, in the in the near future. So we haven't had a chance to really evaluate, see how how we're doing with that as a company yet, and see what what adoption has looked like because it's it's pretty new for us. Makes sense, but uh, glad to see that you guys are giving it a shot and and uh, rolling it out to the teams. And so we certainly love to hear that. And with that, CJ, I think that uh, we can wrap it up here. That's it on the questions. But okay. yeah, I, I definitely just want to thank you for your time. Great insight and a really good look at, at how the training program worked. For for anybody that's watching or watch, we'll send out the recording after this. And so to everyone, thank you and have a great day. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it.